Hey Sam, I'm realizing that I didn't make a video for you yet on how to do this Montana style design t-shirt example file thing that we did in class. Um, so I'm going to create a video for you to follow along to. Um, so basically we'll just download this AI file. And it's going to be a little different for me than it is for you because I already have the issue fixed with this, but when you open this file in Illustrator, you're probably going to notice an error. And the error that you notice when you go to open this is probably going to be that you're missing fonts. And that's what happens when you don't outline your fonts in Adobe InDesign. I have the fonts on my folder or in, installed on my computer, so I'm not missing them, but I'm, it's just an example of what it looks like when you go to open up a AI file or an Illustrator file and you're missing the font. So that's an issue that can be fixed easily by outlining the fonts. Um, so when you create logos, when you create t-shirt designs, anything like that with fonts in them in Illustrator, remember to outline them. Um, and I'll show you how to outline those. Um, Okay, so how can we fix this issue? Well, one thing we can actually go and see if it's a free font online, if we know the name of the font, which the name of the font will show up when you open the file. And the name of the font is Roadstore. And actually, defont.com has it. So this is one way of fixing the issue is just to download the font. To your, and that'll go into your downloads file from defont.com which is a free font website, open this up and install font, either on the OTF or the TTF file, it doesn't really matter which, they're both font files, they're just slightly different. Sometimes I, I will install both versions, I don't know if that's necessary, but anyway, once you do that, if you, call, if you go back, <clears throat> sorry, into Illustrator, that should fix the issue um, for you after you've installed that font. If you're still having issues, close out of Illustrator and then reopen the file <clears throat> and that should work. So you might have to close Illustrator and reopen Illustrator and reopen the Montana style um, file if it still doesn't work after installing the font. Um, how could we fix this in the future? Obviously the designer, me, I'm the one that designed this, I should have outlined all of my fonts. So one way of doing that is just to select the fonts that aren't outlined. If we look, this is actually vector. This font has been outlined. This one isn't, it's still editable. I can change it. I'll just So, and there's actually three fonts stacked on top of each other here to get this outline thing. So there's actually three different fonts stacked on top of each other to, to get that effect that I wanted. But you can go to type, create outlines, so that did the red one, now we'll get the green one, which is kind of hard to select, but still possible. Um, type create outlines, and one more time on that beige font, if we can get it selected, type create outlines. So now we have just shapes. If we zoom in on these, we can see the anchor points. If we select it with the white arrow tool, you can see the different anchor points on each of these layers. And actually you can go into layers panel and go to the text layer and open it up and you can see um, the different layers in there too. But you know, typically you can get these selected um, without too much trouble. And so outlining those fonts. So go ahead and outline the fonts on that. Um, so make sure to install the font from defont.com like I just did and then go through and actually outline all three red, green, and beige fonts um, using type create outlines on each of those text boxes. And then over here on this side, I just wanted to show you a couple tools in Illustrator if you haven't looked at them. Let me look at my notes really quick. Um, so, I mean, this particular file was going to the embroiderer and I originally sent it off with outline, without outlining the fonts and the embroiderer got back to me and said, hey, I don't have these fonts. And they didn't look online to try and install, which I don't blame them. I wouldn't have probably bothered with it either. If I was um, working at a print shop, I'd just say, hey, you need to fix this file and resend. So um, I did have to outline the fonts and then resend it. 
Um, so the next part of this little demo that I want you to follow along to has to do with the blob brush and the live paint bucket tool. Um, so we're going to actually create the cow skull using the blob brush tool. I don't know if you've used it before. Um, I'm in window workspace essentials classic. So make sure you're in the same workspace. I have the toolbar expanded and I do have the properties panel open. Um, if yours isn't open, just go to window properties and make sure that's open. Um, so let's go to basically like the fifth one down and it's under the paintbrush tool. It's called the blob brush tool. If we double click on it, we can change the size here. I actually put mine at one. Usually you can change the angle and the roundness. I don't always do that. This is important to get really smooth lines. This is great. Um, more accurate and jagged lines. This works. If you have like a soft stylus for your, if you have a laptop, um, you can use that on your trackpad when you're doing this. And that actually works pretty well, I guess. I had a student tell me that he did that and it worked well. Um, just one of those plain pens that are basically used. So we can use for like uh, screens, like iPads and stuff. <clears throat> so I actually, let me see. Before I start actually using this, we can change the fill color on this. I'm actually gonna make it black. Um, so if we look at the layers, we'll close this back up. Um, this is the skull. Let's see here. This is the background layer. So maybe we want to put, we want to actually get into the skull layer. We're going to lock the background layer, um, which actually has a sketch in it. So sometimes it's nice to put a layer in the background of your sketch that you that you actually drew from hand. And then you can create another layer on top um, and name it however you want. I'm going to name this skull. And that's where I'm going to actually draw my skull. Um, with the blob brush tool set to as smooth as I can get it, size of one, with the fill color of black for now. Um, so, you know, we can just kind of try and drag this out. I'm just using the trackpad and it's going to be kind of rough for this demo. You don't have to do it perfectly. It's just for the demo purpose. So you don't have to do it. You don't have to spend a ton of time on this. I just want you to experiment with this tool. And then, you know, something like that. It's pretty rough, but it's fine. And then we can click and drag with the white arrow tool to get everything selected. Um, and then we can go underneath the shape, shape builder tool, basically. Um, it's on the left column, kind of looks like two circles and an arrow. Um, underneath that, there's a live paint bucket tool. And this thing's great. We can change the fill color on this. Um, I'm just going to use pink and make sure I'm back on that. And we can actually click into the areas that we just created and quickly fill in the different shapes, different colors. Um, it's just a quick way of creating, creating an image basically. Um, so that's basically what I had the students do today. Super simple. Um, You can also use like, you know, if you're using shapes, let's say I've got, you know, this shape here and maybe I have another one and they're overlapping. Um, I can select them both by pushing shift and then I can go to the live paint bucket tool and I can change the color and I can quickly fill in with whatever colors I want. So go ahead and, and make the cow skull in the skull layer. Um, make sure you're working in the skull layer. You can lock the background down so that you're not shifting this around when you're working over the top of it. So you're not shifting the actual sketch around in the background layer. Um, so lock that down. And then, you know, if you want to experiment with a couple of different shapes, fill those in with the paint bucket tool. Just to show me you used the live paint bucket tool and that you used the um, blob brush tool to create the skull and um, you don't necessarily need to do this piece, but at least make the skull and outline the fonts, install the font and outline the fonts, and then just save this file, command S, and upload that into week nine, I believe, um, of Brightspace. It'll also be in the assignments, but it was due March 8th, which I'm, it's my bad. I didn't give you, um, like anything to work from. So anyway, follow along to this video, upload that, and I will get you a grade. Okay, talk to you later.